These, these snails brood underneath the mother's neck. So what she does when she's depositing a capsule, or a series of capsules, um, is create a thread to anchor each capsule by um, to the hard surface that she's sitting on, okay, which in this case is a plastic cup. And we like these cups not just because they're easy to clean, but because it makes it easy for us to take a brood away from them. So picture, if you will, a cluster of balloons that are all anchored to a substrate. And inside each balloon, there are between 50 and 150 little embryos that are swimming around and developing. Um, the browner they are, the better developed their shell is. Okay. So um, I'm going to take this brood away from Bostrycaculus calotriformis, which is our snail of the day. So sometimes mom, of course, she doesn't want to come off the substratum, and she also doesn't want to give up her brood. Okay. Right. How many times can you do this to one animal? As many as you want. Uh -huh. They are really forgiving. Um, they will keep laying. So this is what she looks like turned upside down. She's rolling her foot down. She's actually got a lot of the brood mass sort of trapped on her foot. So the first thing I'm going to do here is take, pick that up carefully and put it... I don't actually need the microscope for this part. As soon as you hatch these guys, um, They, uh, I've, the species I've worked with will accelerate their shell development a little bit. So if you want to, them to be at a particular stage for your observations, you have to hatch them and then work with them right away. Lots of little swimmers. One thing that intrigues me is they seem to have a sort of pseudo shell. Um, some, some snails have a proper echinospira, like basically a double layered um, shell. These guys have something a bit like an echinospira. Um, though not nearly as elaborate as that, um, like a simple, simple bubble of shell that's over, neat, over the developing larval shell. Um, that's something interesting, and I don't think that ever has been described, um, but it's present in this, this genus, and it's also in uh, some of the, the crucibulums. And this one is, is furiously operating its, its cilia. Yes, it is. Does it think it's swimming away from a predator or that it's <laughs> feeding on whatever is around it? I think right now, and you may have noticed, in fact, that the tempo of beat has increased. It is actually swimming harder right now, and it's because um, I think it's got a little bit of, um, um, there's, a, there's a little bit of adhesion between the shell right now and the plastic it's sitting on. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sensing this is resistance and trying to get itself free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's, it's working a little bit harder. But they do swim extremely fast by default. Um, when they're not swimming, they're sinking. The only times they're not swimming are when they pulled their velum in and because of the excess mass of the animal, whoops, you timed out there, um, they sink like a rock. And in nature, this all would have been happening in a tidal pool, in mud, in the water column? Probably. Okay, so, so that's a really good question. Um, they'll go through these behaviors wherever they are, most likely, but, they're, um, but mom, to some extent, chooses the time of hatching. Um, and one thing we've noticed in lab is that hatching time, we get them to hatch when we, when we change their water with warmer water and when we give them food. Um, I'm actually trying to quantify this right now in a little experiment with Bostri Capulis um, about the cues that, that signal hatching and how long you can delay the hatching in the absence of a cue. Um, but it looks like mom may hatch them um, when, of course, when they've developed to the right point, but also um, um, when she's getting the temperature signal maybe of the tide coming in. So it could be that you need a high tide and she needs to be able to taste the water and know that the environment's pretty friendly for them. Um, and then she picks up her head and bulldozes them straight out. She bursts all the capsules at once. The animals are glommed together in uh, very soft gel mucus that disperses, that will disperse quickly in, in the water. Um, and then probably they're getting sloshed around in a slurry of mud and sand and water. And eventually, because of their strong swimming, they'll make their way out of that um, and be transported out away from shore.